I appreciate the blessings that we have sometimes. Have you ever come to the masjid or come for the salah and wonder, is the masjid going to be here? Has that ever happened to you? I don't, it's never happened to us. Or even if you come to the masjid and you're wondering, am I going to be able to go back? Is my family going to be okay when they go back? Is my affairs in order that God forbid something wants to happen? Is that fear going through your mind, that worry or concern? It's not. So I think whenever, uh, you know, not a single salah should go by that we, we don't appreciate and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that blessing. Um, and also I think we don't truly appreciate the salah, the fajr itself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that the true rata'a before fajr is better than the entire world and everything in it. Not the fajr, I'm not talking about fajr, just the sunnah of fajr is better than the entire world and everything in it. What value would you place in all your material and, and things? What value would you place for all things? And even more so is the fard itself. So just once, let's all say from the depths of our hearts, say, Alhamdulillah. I want to begin with an example. Now, a story. This story is about, and I'm going to make up a name. I'm going to say Yusuf. If anybody here is named Yusuf, don't take, don't take it personally. It's a made up name, made up person. And Yusuf has three issues. And my uh, short talk today is about addressing those three issues. So let's just say Yusuf uh, is here studying. He's, uh, you know, he's on a student visa. He's been here for maybe six years, for example. He's studying at a local college, and Yusuf is uh, very, very committed to coming to Fajr Salah. Mashallah. He comes to Fajr Salah almost every day. And he does a lot of dhikr, and, and he's very particular about, you know, reading some Qur'an when he's here. But Yusuf, uh, he's married, his wife's not here yet. He has a, he, he's very rough with his spouse, very aggressive. He gets angry very easily. Yusuf uh, doesn't have a good relationship with his cousins and relatives. Whenever there's a da'wah, he's always... Uh, arguing or he, some people he doesn't even deal with. He's like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. So this same Yusuf is also renting an apartment, sorry, renting a house with five other people. Okay, so obviously as a student, he just has one particular room. So these total five people, they when they all come to live, they, they get together and they have a meeting and they say, hey, everyone, we're all going to be roommates, right? Uh, there are certain, let's just pick some rules, some responsibilities. Uh, once a week, you're in charge of cleaning the dishes and vacuuming the floor. Everyone's like, yeah, that's pretty fair. We all divide up the task and take care of the house. We have some rules that uh, you don't leave the food out. You don't throw food in your local, in your room garbage because, you know, ants come, bugs come. Everyone's like, all right, that's pretty fair. And then every Friday night, we're, you know, just going to have a quick five-minute get-together and just kind of discuss things. Like, you know, advice or suggestions, issues. You know, let's say the Wi-Fi password changed. Let's say there's a heating issue. Everyone's complaining, like it's too hot in here. Let's, let's lower the heat. And then once a month, everyone agrees, let's just hang out. Let's just go get some lunch, some coffee. You know, because we're living together, we gotta spend time together. And this same Yusuf has a car and he has to go to the DMV. Yusuf shows up to the DMV and there's a system there. You know, and depending on what county you live in or where DMV you go to, there's a, you, you walk in and there's a little machine, you take a ticket, and it has a number on it. When the number is called, you wait, you go up to the front counter and you ask for whatever issue needs to be done. So Yusuf walks in, he sees his line of people, he just walks straight to the front. And he starts banging on the glass. I have to renew my registration. 
And they're like, listen, you, you have to take a ticket. No, I don't have time to take a ticket. I don't care. I, I need to renew my registration. Okay? And then uh, uh, after arguing and talking, making a lot of commotion, everyone's like, listen, we can't help you. You have to leave. And he's like, unbelievable. Look at the Islamophobia. Look at them. They don't, I'm, I'm not from here. That's why they're against me. So Yusuf has three problems. Okay? Number one, Yusuf is, and his three eyes, and I want you to remember these three eyes. Number one, Yusuf is imbalanced. He's imbalanced. When it comes to your individual life, your religious relationship, spiritual relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's one aspect. But then there's other aspects. You have a relationship and duty to your family members, you have a relationship and duty to your in laws, your relatives, your neighbors. You have a relationship and duty to your larger community, both Muslim and our brothers and sisters in humanity that are not in our faith. Your larger community, there's a responsibility, and Yusuf has imbalance. Number two, <coughs> Yusuf has the problem of being isolated. He's isolated. You know, he's in this, he's living with four other roommates, total five people, but he's not following the rules, he's not cleaning the dishes, he's not vacuuming, he's leaving food out, he's not attending the weekly meeting, and he's not attending the, the monthly get-together. And so at the, if, if at the end of the year, if all the you know, other roommates are like, listen man, this is a problem, and he never does his work, he always complains, you know, and we tell him we're gonna get a new roommate, Yusuf gets upset, how could you do this to me? Is it because of my skin, is it because of my religion? He's, he's complaining. Second problem is he is isolated. Third problem is he is uh, indifferent. Or he's ignorant, both combined, he doesn't care. The DMV has a system. You just go and take the ticket, you wait your turn, you get your job done. And also what he doesn't know is you can make an appointment before you go to make things faster. And even about that, he doesn't know that he can do everything online. But Yusuf doesn't know. Either he doesn't care or he never found out. The, 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 my talk today is called Faithful Activism. Faithful Activism, it's two things. And it addresses all these three problems. It's about living a life that's balanced. It's about living a life that is uh, contributing to your local and larger society. And it's about living a life of knowledge, of knowing what's going on, being educated, knowing the system. Uh, and it's based on, uh, Imam uh, Omar has an entire other class on this. So I just took some snippets, some parts of it, and I highly recommend you go through the entire class. The first thing I wanna talk about is every single week, the khatib recites a few ayahs. And, and some people don't even know there's ayahs. He says, Ya ayyuh alladheena amanu taqullah haqqa tuqadhi. Khatib also recites, Ya ayyuh al-nas uttaqu rabbukum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijal kathiran wa nisa'a. And the khatib also recites, Ya ayu ladina amaltukullaha wa kulu qawlan sadida. Yuslah lakum, a'ma lakum, wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum, wa man yuta'illah rasuluhu faqad faza fawzun azimah. With the gist of that ayah, it's a very powerful ayah, that whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follows the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be given success. Not just success, ultimate success. Ultimate success. Happiness, security. You reach your destination in this life and the next. And if you look at uh, the question, what is it? What does it mean to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Because remember, in Islam, it means to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam doesn't, if you translate Islam, it doesn't mean religion. Religion is a very specific set of rituals and beliefs. Islam is deen, way of life. It's overwhelming, comprehensive. So if you look at the life of Rasulullah you took the book of Hadith and Fiqh, all that, scholars divided into five rough categories. The first one is Imaniyat, spirituality. Belief in Allah, the hereafter. The next is Rasulullah also taught us how to pray, how to fast, how to go to Hajj. That is ibadat, worship. 
Then is ikhlaqiyat, character, how to conduct yourself at the highest level. Then comes the fourth category, mu'amalat, which is your interactions with other people. You're getting married, you're having kids. Then comes ma'ashara, which is, in general, your involvement with your larger community. To some civic engagement to some degree. And so today I'm going to talk about that last step. Now if somebody says, you know what, I'm going to do one of the five. I'm going to focus on imaniyah, build my deen. Then they've really missed out on the bigger message of Rasulullah sallallahu If someone says, I'm going to do two out of the five, or three out of the five. They're, that imbalance is there. That's a problem. That's an issue. But they're missing out. If anybody had the right or had the beauty or the privilege of only doing one thing, and that was Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no one enjoyed worship more than him. He would ask Aisha Anha, his wife, you know what? Can you give me permission tonight? I'm just, I just want to, I just want to worship Allah the entire night. And he would spend the entire night worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes one ayah. And he would be so, it would be such a source of comfort and peace and tranquility for him that it would be, his feet would be swollen. There would be a puddle of, there would be his, the, the ground around him would be wet because of his tears. He wouldn't realize it. Sometimes his sajdas would be equivalent to how long it takes <laughs> us to recite Surah Al Baqarah, Surah Al Imran. If anybody was allowed to or given the privilege, it was Rasulullah Sallallahu But had he done that, he would not have been able to complete his mission, his goal, his objective. And whatever he did, and we'll cover this in a bit, he did this out of a true sense of concern. He would make dua for and stay late at night up for, making dua for people he never met. He made dua for us. And he, this concern, how can you, we make it into Jannah? How can everyone around us be protected from the hellfire? And that concern even continues to the Day of Judgment, where he's going to be running around back and forth between the hold and the scale, trying to make dua, squeeze in an intercession. Well, can I fit one extra person? Oh Allah, please forgive this one person. And that deep concern and care is the, the, the roots, the source of a lot of the activism. So faithful activism, faithful meaning this lens and balance of the deen. And then the activism comes from this sense of care. And I want you to remember this. Rasulullah had a concern for people in the Akhra, right? He wanted people to be successful, to go to Jannah. That manifested in Dakwa. Rasulullah had a care for people in this life, their hunger, their fear. Their clothing, their housing. And that concern translated into khidmah, into service. So that concern between the, caring for people in this life was khidmah, caring for people in the akhara was da'wah, the whole, his whole life was spent between those of serving people, caring for people. And so, uh, number one, we think about, we, we can't just do one thing. It is a responsibility of us to be involved in a larger community. Now, we all know about the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he talks about a ship, right? The first top level and lower level. And I'll just try to summarize some important points. This ship is made up of people, randomly, they were assigned. It wasn't like they bought first class or they paid a little bit less and got economy. It was randomly assigned some people on the upper deck and some people on the lower deck. And the upper deck have more amenities. They can get the water whenever they want. Okay? And the lower deck people, when they're thirsty, they need water, they're coming to the upper deck and they're getting the water going back down. And, and, and the, the hadith is beautiful, and scholars give an explanation that whenever they go up, the people from the lower deck, the upper deck people are annoying. Oh, why, why are you bothering us? They, they make faces. So much so that the lower deck people are like, that's it, I'm, it's. it's it's a, we're tired of being judged, looked down upon. Like they're always giving us issues and stares and all this. We're not gonna go up anymore to get the water to the upper deck. We're just gonna make a hole in the side of the ship and get the water. And what's so beautiful, what's so uh, powerful is that when the people started making the holes and the, the ship started sinking, 
That's when the upper deck people started caring. They went downstairs and said, what's going on? What are you guys doing? And who is held accountable when the ship starts to sink? It's the people on the upper deck. Because they didn't care or assist the people at the lower deck. They should have been asking the people at the lower deck, hey, do you need water? Can we help you? Can we, facil- can we make space for you upstairs? What can we do? Because only when the ship started sinking did they start caring. If we have a situation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, whether it's the deen, a connection to the masjid, whether it's wealth, whether it's any type of blessing, we have an obligation and a duty to utilize that blessing to help others who may not have that blessing. To help others who have that need, who have that pain. And it and if we don't, if we live that isolated lifestyle, you know what? It's not my problem. It's not my issue. What's going to end up happening? You're still part of that ship. That society, whatever is happening in the, in the ills or the problems or the issues, it's going to come back to you. It's going to impact you, you and your family and your life. And so to be proactive, to understand, you know what? I need to understand that I, it's not, it's my, their problem is my problem. Their issues are my issues. And Rasulullah he had the option of doing his own thing, of being isolated, and he did not. He was someone who always was involved with the people. You know, uh, uh, when when someone does something good, Rasulullah tells us you should what appreciate them, you should thank them. What happens in most communities? People who are volunteering, maybe the Masjid board, nonprofit organization, holding an event. They're the main recipients of complaint, criticism, why did you do this, why did you do that? And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And it's easy for any volunteer or any board member or any person who's trying to do good for the community to be like, you know what, I don't want to deal with this. You know what, this is too much. I'm trying to help you and you're returning back with all these problems and issues and criticism and and negativity. Rasulullah sallallahu tells us, Al-Ulama warthatul anbiya, scholars are the heirs of the Prophet, they're the inheritors of the Prophet. Why? They take the knowledge and they spread it. And another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu tells us that you shouldn't be jealous or envious of anyone, but there's two exceptions. One is someone where Allah gave someone knowledge and they spread it. Or number two, someone that Allah gave them wealth and they give it towards charity or good. They're infusing good into the society and the world around them. Now the Prophet ﷺ didn't say that the inheritors of the Prophets are those that pray Qiyam like the Prophet. It's, yes, it's very important. Qiyam is a, is a cornerstone, a foundation. It is, the, it is the process and elevation of your ibadah. <coughs> you know, when you establish your fard, the next level is you establish your fard and your sunnah. When you establish your fard and sunnah, then it's fard, sunnah, and nawafir. And then eventually you get to the point where you're doing all that and you're doing Qiyam. You're praying the Hajjah. Or you're praying before you go to sleep. Remember, Qiyam is praying in the night. It doesn't have to be in the middle of the night. And Tahajjud is a whole another level where you sleep and you wake up and pray. But the point is, this is a, it, it's, a, it's a growth, and it is very important. But the, there's a certain aspect of being, learning and teaching that involves interactions with other people. It's about that sharing of good. Rasulullah uh, also says, وَاللَّهُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Convey on my behalf even if it's one verse. Even if it's one verse, inheritor of the Prophet. Another hadith Rasulullah says, الَّذِينَ يُخَالِطُ النَّاسِ وَيَصْبِرُ The hadith goes on is, the one who mixes with the people and tolerates the hardship that comes with mixing with the people is better than the one who avoids the people and is not patient with the hardship that comes with that. When you get involved with people, you're, it, it opens the door to problems and difficulty. People are difficult to deal with. Not just within your family, not just within your relatives, but in general. And Rasulullah knew that and he did that. He was involved with the people. The question is, how involved are we? Are we living more towards a life of isolation? Or are we just like we're doing our own thing? If Islam was deen and ikhlaq and character, then the best testimony of that good character is how you deal with bad character. How would you know good character if it wasn't for bad character? Right? 
So the first level is you mix with people, you get involved with people's lives, you try to uh, be in the room, and you deal with them. That's the first level. You tolerate them, you're patient with them. The next level is you're interacting with people, you're dealing with people, and you're serving them. Meaning, they're bad-mouthing you, they're harassing you, they're doing all this, but in turn, you're giving back and saying, you know what, here, take this food. Here, let me help you with your issues with your rent. Or hey, someone's, uh, someone's uh, unfairly taking your rights, let me fight for your rights, right? And there's so many different causes, so many different things in the community. So number one is uh, involvement in your local masjid, involvement that's, or local Islamic organizations. But don't limit it to that. There's so many nonprofits, even in Piscataway, even in New Jersey, that fight hunger, that fight discrimination, that help with people's health care, help with unemployment, domestic view, uh, abuse, uh, issues with racism, issues with drug abuse. There's so many issues and problems in every community. And there are people who are getting together, working together to help uh, work on those issues. And we should be involved in that. We should know what's going on. And there's institutions, whether it's the high school, the senior citizen home, the library. There's all these things, just like the masjid, where there's good people coming together to do good things. And all of us, if I was to point to you and ask you, all right, what are you involved in? We should have, okay, you know what, when it comes to the Muslim community, I'm involved in these three organizations. When it comes to the larger community in faith, in humanity, I'm involved in these three, five different things. When it comes to, remember, imbalance, when it comes to my personal relationship with Allah, these are things I'm working on. For my, for my Quran, I have a Quran teacher. For the, my seerah, I'm reading through this book. For my relationship with my family, once a week I go on with my wife or my husband. We spend quality time. Well, once a month, we go on a road trip. Twice a year, we go on a vacation. You know, I send out uh, every Ramadan, or every I send out uh, the flower suits to my relatives. I send a WhatsApp mes message to my my relatives overseas or wherever, there's a system of maintaining that balance. So we should have that within us. And when you look at the time of Rasulullah an example of that, right? We all, uh, at the time of Rasulullah there was a class system, a tribal system, right? So there were powerful tribes and weaker tribes. So powerful tribes would take advantage of weaker tribes. Right? There were rich people and poor people. If you were part of, you were a poor person in a powerful tribe, you would have more authority than a rich person in a weaker tribe. And Rasulullah was part of Banu Hashim, which gave him that leverage. They were a powerful tribe. And he used that leverage to help people in need. <coughs> and we all know the, the, the incident that happened where uh, a, a Yemeni man came to Mecca to sell something. And the person who was buying from him said, you know what, I'm not going to give you your money. And then he basically said, you know, get lost. I, I know I can get away with this. So he went to the Kaaba and he made a big deal out of it. He started saying poetry and shaming the people, saying, you, you're, you said you're good people, you have moral values, you're hospitable, hospitable, but look, I've been harmed. What kind of society are you? And he basically shamed the people. The people got together, tribes got together, and they basically made a pact. That said, you know what, moving forward, that anytime anybody has this economic injustice or is wronged, we're gonna to come together and support that person. Okay? So five tribes got together and said that it was called Hibd al Fudu, that you know what, we're not gonna let this happen ever again, which is a big deal. It's a big deal because at that time, some tribes, if somebody harmed one tribe, they said something or they stole their gold or their camel and they would fight over it, sometimes have wars over it for years. Small petty issues. So to come together to say, you know, we're going to work together for khair and good was a big deal. And Rasulullah said that if, if I was presented with this same situation or asked to be part of it again or do it again, I would do it again. And what's interesting is this pact that, you know what, if anybody is weak, harmed, we're going to support them. If Rasulullah was the part of that week, if he was in Makkah being oppressed, and he said, I'm going to support it, people might say, why? <coughs> oh, you're only supporting this because it helps you. It's self-serving. But scholars tell us that when he said this statement, he was at the peak of his power, after Fatha Makkah. 
So he had over, already had Mecca and Medina under his control. And he's saying in a state of power that if anybody's weak, I will support them. I will, and so what's the modern day equivalent of that? Or similar to it? There are other communities and other people, both Muslim and not Muslim, other faiths, that are working towards justice, working towards whoever doesn't have a voice, giving them a voice, whoever is being abused, helping those that are abused, who are, or who are uh, getting involved with society, we should be part of that. Rasulullah didn't say, you know what, you tribes, and, and when they did this pact, this was before uh, 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 Iqra happened, before uh, Jibra'i Salam, Rasulullah was part of this before he was a prophet, in his community. Now he didn't say, you know what, I want, you guys have all these problems, you guys are, you know, uh, burying people alive, this evil, evil practice, you guys are doing hajj and tawaf, you guys are doing tawaf with, with no clothes on, indecency, fix these problems and then I'll sit down with you and we'll talk about justice. No. If there was a cause that they came together to work on, Rasulullah said, okay, I'm part of this cause. And so uh, the question is, what are we doing for those causes? How involved are we? And uh, it gives a precedent that 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 hits that pact gives the precedence that we have a moral responsibility for all people. And I'll start with the community you're in. You know, you, you, if you live a life of isolation, what's going to happen? You, be, like we live in Piscataway, we live in Middlesex County, we live in the state of New Jersey. We should be in a situation. Imagine you disappeared. Or your family, your, imagine the whole Muslim community disappeared one day. Is there going to be like, oh my God, where is everyone? Are they going to feel like we're, 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 we're missed? Or is it going to be like, oh, nothing ever happened? Are we providing value and service and khidmah? And not for the sake of PR. You know, there's a problem sometimes is, oh, let's go do this, let's go clean up this place and it will be good da'wah. The source of our commitment and service is not because of PR. It's because it's our duty and responsibility. We're the khalifas on the earth. Our, our care and concern is not just limited to Muslims. It goes to anybody living, our neighbors, right? people of other faiths, even the, the trees and the animals. It's a, it's a duty of ours. Right? And we're, when you're involved in the local community and you're showing this, and you know there's some, there are other people involved in these efforts, fighting hunger, fighting oppression, fighting injustice, and sometimes their, their purpose is, I want to get elected, or uh, you know, it's going to help them in their business. And when they see someone who's genuinely working for good, because it's, it's a sense of duty, it gets impacted. It makes a difference. They're really genuinely moved by that. Like, wow. So the, 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 the question is, what are we going to do and how well are we going to be? And I'll end with the third problem of ignorance or uh, this sense of apathy. There's a system in place. It's not a perfect system. We don't agree with all of it, but there's a system in place. People run for office, you fund them, you donate for their cause, you ask them, and they get into office. And if they made a commitment to you, you hold them accountable. Like, listen, you, you didn't just come to the masjid and take photos, they went back, and we voted for them. Once you're in office, it's not a guarantee we're going to vote for you for the next 10 years. No, you have to maintain that. You have to be committed. And if you don't, then that's it. You're, you're not going to get our vote, you're not going to get our funding. There's a system in place. And if you ever feel like you're powerless right now, maybe your voice isn't being heard, the question is what should you have done 10 years ago, 20 years ago? You should have been involved. You should have known the system. Yes, again, it's not perfect. But there's, that's, what some people do is throw their hands up and say, oh, politics, I'm not. There is, number one, involvement in the community that has nothing to do with politics. You just go, there's a soup kitchen, there's a high school, there's somebody in the senior citizen home doesn't know how to use their computer. You're volunteering how to use Gina. Or someone in the high school needs mentorship uh, about career advice. Yes, you're working towards a good in your community. Or someone, like let's say uh, 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 someone separated from their family, let's say like immigration issues, whatever. You're working towards the policy sector of getting involved and in issuing policy to help people, but at the same time you're raising funds to actually help people, right? There's no politics in no, mostly in community service. So it's about getting involved, knowing the system, and, 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 and creating a game plan. 
Right? So uh, I want to ask a question right now. Is who here, who here is committed to be like, you know what, Maz, what you're saying makes sense. If I have an imbalance, I'm going to work on my imbalance for my personal life with Allah, my personal ibadah, my relationships with my family, and my involvement in my community. And you know what, Maz, number two, you're right. I, 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 I'm living in the bubble. It's my own, I need to break this bubble and be not isolated. Be involved in my larger community. If you're not involved in the Muslim community, get involved. Volunteer. But don't stop there. Get involved in the local larger community. There's committees, there's organizations, there's nonprofits. So much going on, right? Civic engagement, get involved. And number three, you know, Miles, you're right. I'm going to learn more about the system that we're in. Maybe you're not the one running for office. That's fine. But you're the one supporting them financially. Maybe you're not the one supporting them financially, but you're learning and getting support in your network. Where are you doing something, right? Getting to the point where you're uh, you're voicing your opinion and you're getting involved. Uh, Yus, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. When the brothers got together to kill Yusuf alayhi salam, we all know the story. Evil, evil intentions. The Quran tells us that the brothers got together and they said, "We're going to kill Yusuf." Uqtulu Yusuf. One person said, "No, let's throw him in the well. Let's not kill him. Let's throw him in the well." One voice. One brother said, let's not do that. And guess what happened? They listened to him. Don't ever <coughs> underestimate your voice. Don't ever underestimate your contribution and significance to greater policy or greater community change. And the question is, number one, understand the value of your voice. And number two, work on building your voice, the power of your voice. Again, that roommate example. If there's an issue that comes up with a roommate, a concern he has, and he has not, he's just not doing anything, not doing his chores, not following the rules. And he starts complaining to the other roommates, hey, I have this problem. You know, uh, my window is not, doesn't show, close properly. The draft comes in. And he's complaining, having commotion. If he was someone involved, if he knew the system, he does window fix like that. But because he's isolated, he doesn't know the system, he doesn't know what's going on. No one, no one wants to help him. Nobody cares about helping him. Nobody cares about what he thinks. So we, we, should, we should get involved, we should know the system, and we need to have a balanced approach to our lives. So, who here with a raise of hands? I want you to raise your hand if you have, wants to be like, I, I'm gonna make the intention to actually do it once. I want you to raise your hand. No, higher, very, very high. Okay. Now, no, keep it up, keep it up. No, higher, higher, you, have your, you put it down. And I want you to go like this to the right. Go like this to your right. Now, who's there? And I want you to next, spend the next 60 seconds, say salam to them. No, raise your hand high. Look at the person next to you. Who has their hand raised? Look at the person, no one's looking. Look at the person, okay? I want you to say salam, get their name and their number. Do it right now, really quickly. Say salam. I want to make a difference right now. I'm not, not, I, don't, I don't just come and listen and go home and go to sleep, any bagels. Say salam, what's my name, exchange numbers. And say, you are now, congratulations, my accountability buddy. Go to somebody, preferably you don't know. Okay. Say, you are now my accountability buddy. And... Today, by the end of today, it's up to you. By the end of today, we're going to have a five-minute call. You can do it now in breakfast. And we're going to ask each other, what are we going to do for these three problems? I'm not talking about a 50-year strategic plan. You can do that too if you want. I'm saying, for my personal life, how do I bring balance between my ibadah? Like, let's say, for example, you know what? For my Quran, Quran and Sunnah. Those are two things, very simple to start with. What am I doing now? What am I going to do differently? For my sunnah, what am I doing now? What am I doing differently? For my family life, what system am I going to create to be more involved and be a better husband and better wife, better son and better daughter, better uh, brother or sister? And the third question is, how am I going to get more involved? And you guys can get involved together. You know what? Let's join a committee in the Muslim. Let's join a committee at local Piscataway Township. Let's join a nonprofit group. So that's your task. Okay? And, and uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a beautiful ayah in the Quran that talks about people who pray the entire night in worship, 
they make dua to Allah before Fajr, and then they give charity throughout the day. There's a balance here. They pray the entire night, and they give charity and serve people throughout the day. The prophetic model. So that serving of people, that helping of people, of being that voice for people, was an extension of their ibadah, of their worship. It goes hand in hand. They're both connected. Right? So we want to be people who wake up for tajjah, and we want to be people who are involved in people's lives, who actually make a difference. Uh, how much is the, is the hajj started? So, uh, the, so, two minutes, okay, inshallah. Any questions really quickly? Feedback, comments, yes. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, at the local level, yes, definitely. And the problem is, when, when people don't understand the system, and the system doesn't work for them, they say the system broken. And again, I'm, I'm not saying to you from an Islamic standpoint that it is, uh, you know, because it's not, uh, it's the issue of ishtihad among scholars. I'm saying, fine, if you have issues or bad experiences in politics, just get involved. Just serve people in your community. Your neighbors should know your number, your cell phone, and they should be happy you're your neighbors. If you went to a high school or college, you should be staying connected to that high school or college and getting back. I graduated from the institution, I'm back to serve. How can I help? Listen, if there's a, a, a problem in Piscataway, I'm at the forefront. I'm helping them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then in terms of politics and local government, find someone that has knowledge and t- talk to them. You know what? I'm just interested. I want to learn more. Right? When you do the system correctly, when you, it is effective. Again, just like the, if, if somebody showed up to the DMV and said, you know what, I don't like the system of taking the ticket. I don't agree with it. I tried it once and it never worked, for, I'm never gonna do it again. What are you gonna tell that person? Okay, yes, there is a better way of doing things, but it is what it is, right? Um, so yeah, I would say uh, it's, it's definitely, it is effective when done correctly, and not everyone should be doing it, honestly. It, it requires a certain type of person. It may not be you, it may be you. But it's, if you're not the right person, you're gonna find someone who is the right person, right? And it's not black and white, you know? Unfortunately, it's not like, uh, we're, we're looking for a, a prophet, then I'll vote for him. It's not, it's, it's, it's a very gray, complicated area, and I'm not saying it's perfect, but it is something that we need to be engaged with and try to work with again. Yeah. yeah. You, sh- you should join a Muslim board and uh, <laughs> develop a Yes, yes, alhamdulillah. I, I was on the board for many years, alhamdulillah. And it is something that's on my mind as well. But it's it's really, all of us should be thinking, we're co- attending a masjid, then we're volunteering the masjid, and then we're leaving a masjid. So all of us should be in one of those three categories. We should not be, I show up and pray and I go home. Just like it's not, you live in a community and you eat and sleep and do nothing. So inshallah, I think all of us, that we need that, 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 that uh, growth pipeline. You go from here to here and you encourage others as well. إن شاء الله زلنا جزاك الله خير سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك وتوليه سبحان الذي رب العزة عما يسيكون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين